All right. Um, this one's another uh, chunker, so <laughs> we'll just try to pass through it. You talking about me or the article? The article. <laughs> calm oh. down, you. Hey, we don't do personal attacks here. Yeah. We're, I don't know, Nas. You friends. and your blushometer. You oh, do the, was not an attack. It was you do the side. You do the side ones. And it then was I get teased Oh, I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> I'm just with you. Um, this one's by Mike Stubbs, a PC gamer. Uh, looks like I'm gonna have to break this up here. Um, and this guy. Um, so this is coming from um, uh, what is uh, tongue something tongue. I didn't write out Joe write Tongue. Down. Joe Tongue. Okay, thank you, Nas. <laughs> um, always felt like in the $60 box product model that I was having to make decisions that were not in the best interest of players, said Tongue. Uh, it was in the best interest of how do we sell as many copies in the first 48 hours as we can. One of the huge strengths of the games, uh, the games as a service model is you can be long-term. You can think long-term in terms of what is best for the player and how does that overlap with what is best for the company? <laughs> uh, I think it allows you to make much, much, much better decisions overall. Um, and then the second portion, <clears throat> um, and he says, uh, I would wager that any developer who has ever worked in the $60 box product model up until the point where E3 was canceled has a story about the E3 build, said Tongue. It's like, let's jam as much BS vaporware uh, into the build as we can in the next three months because we have to have a huge showing at E3 because it's our one opportunity to talk to our audience before we launch the game. I would have to wager that some hugely significant uh, percentage of those E3 efforts ended up on the cutting room floor because they were half-baked and caused people to crunch and really have to make huge sacrifices to get it in. But I bet a bunch have never even made it into the, the game uh, because of the way that you develop those things. So that's my favorite example of hugely impactful decisions that were not about what is best for the player. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we will uh, well, just, that... <laughs> yes, go for it, go for it. I was going to say like, okay, I get what he's saying, but yeah. at the same time, like that had nothing to do with the player. <laughs> mm -hmm. that had everything to do with you trying to capture attention mm -hmm. to make sales right you the were trying $60... to win the pissing contest right yeah. and that can go the... both ways with live services also but go ahead exactly Sorry. the the 60 dollars box price mm -hmm. you can fit things i mean come on Mm -hmm. Look at Hell Divers. Mm -hmm. How much does that cost? I'm sorry. What? $30 yeah. in yeah. a $70 game world? What? Yeah. yeah. And it's online. And oh, I'm sorry. It, you know, like Bethesda servers allow like what? 25 players per per world. Mm -hmm. And that thing is crashing constantly. <laughs> and how many hundreds do you have in Hell Divers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Bethesda. <laughs> Fix your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Yeah. But think about it, like, you know, the the whole argument of E3, E3 was about bringing all the developers, all mm -hmm. the consoles, mm -hmm. all the everything together and having a huge expo yep. for gamers. We took them for granted. It wasn't it wasn't geared at what was best for gamers in any way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. It was a giant advertisement. Right. Yeah. So you can't tell me that like this these presentations that you put together that ended up on the cutting room floor weren't what's best for game it wasn't about the gamers yeah. it was about doing commercials and advertisements right. and and getting attention for your game mm -hmm. and yeah it was the biggest thing ever but it's been four years yeah so why are you even bringing e3 into this <laughs> everybody has started doing their own thing mm -hmm. and so now your advertisements are your own you know, or it's done with whatever company mm -hmm. you're working with, whether it be Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, or all of them. Yeah. That's now like on you mm -hmm. if you do it the same way that you did with E3. Yeah. You know, and I get, <clears throat> I get it. E3, it, you had so much in such a small amount of time and you had to make it big and, and attention grabbing mm -hmm. or you, you were just kind of like lost in in yeah. the crowd yeah and i do get that so yes i see what he's saying as far as it probably ended up on the floor because it was just a bunch of attention grabbing bs mm -hmm. but it had nothing to do with whether it was good or not for gamers because it was literally about your company getting mm -hmm. attention so that it could make that money when the game came out mm -hmm. it was, it, 
the gamers didn't even enter into their mind when they were thinking about this yeah. and now he's trying to be like well you know we were we couldn't do what was best for the gamers mm -hmm. because we essentially lied to them in these advertisements <laughs> well hello all you do <laughs> is that sort of thing you know? live like, services aren't immune to that Live yeah services, it's you know? it it's like watching the previews for the movie and you're like oh man i can't wait to see that and then you watch the movie and you're like where was that part from the preview <laughs> it got, it got yeah, cut. a lot of things that are in trailers don't actually make it into the movie 100 yeah. yes yeah. yeah right on nas the ins oh boy yes so when you, when i saw this headline i'm like hmm i wonder where he's gonna go with this and i read this and i have to admit i was a little irritated a little <laughs> bit irritated so where oh geez where do i even start okay mm. um so the first thing i wrote because i wrote some notes and the first mm -hmm. thing i wrote was it sounds like joe wants to make soap operas instead of movies <laughs> which is fine which is fine but just don't say they're better right don't say that a live service game is better uh than a 60 dollar boxed product model and by the way 60 bucks where have you been joe i know 60 bucks anymore <laughs> yeah we're in a seventy dollar world now for yes. some ridiculous reason. Yeah, it's only gonna go up, at least for AAA. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when your focus is on how many units you're trying to sell, mm -hmm. instead of just making a good game and letting it sell sell itself. Yes. No wonder you're having a problem, Joe. Mm -hmm. Like it, the live service games, I get it. I mm -hmm. get the appeal. It's yeah. not for me, but I understand the appeal. And by the way. I, I should have said this off the top. Joe is developing a MOBA inspired battle royale. <laughs> so he's got he's skin a in little the game. biased. Yes. Okay. And and, and it's, it's basically like, hey, this is what's popular. This is what's grabbing money. And this is what everybody's, yeah. you Let's know. Let's make everything look like Fortnite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this Fortnite like, style nobody, stuff. Nobody <laughs> asked these game companies to cram all of this BS vaporware into an E3 build. That was a right. choice that you made. Mm -hmm. And why that stuff never never made it off of the cutting room floor, there are so many possible reasons for that. But we're mm -hmm. supposed to just take it on faith that it's because you couldn't live up to those expectations <laughs> because they felt all this pressure to compete with the other. What? How, how much of this was just bad management? Yeah. How much of this was just people saying, well, we need to have stuff that we can show off, even if it doesn't make it into the game. We have to crunch, 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 crunch. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily the developers. That's mm -hmm. management Yeah. That's yeah. that's pushing for all of this. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's like yeah. the other day I, I got... Um, I got a question, you know, someone that doesn't game very often, but they, it was, um, oh, what's this, you know, and this, this, and this, and I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 Call of Duty, and they were like, oh, you mean that commercial that I saw that I thought was a movie the other day, and it ended up being a video game, Call of Duty, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much, you know, That's like, hilarious. no, it's not necessarily going to look like that <laughs> as right, a right. game, like, you know, um, but that's, that's another reason why we mm -hmm. put you know, not actual game footage or actual mm -hmm. game footage at the end during all of these things. Like, yeah. Uh, I don't mind live service. Mm -hmm. I mind live service with an ever changing, expensive mm -hmm. set of microtransactions mm -hmm. that are ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when, you know, when Joe says it allows him to make better decisions i question that statement <laughs> yes. because uh, suicide squad kill the justice league exists right mm -hmm. all these bad freaking live service games exist so the, when you, when you make an unpopular choice mm -hmm. in a 60 dollar box game that is complete and you make a choice that customers don't like mm -hmm. you have to live with that yeah but with live service if you make a bad decision you can just fix it and hope people's memories aren't long enough <laughs> that they'll remember the previous mistakes that you made and that they'll be forgiving enough even mm -hmm. though some of these companies do not yeah. deserve to be forgiven mm. like I'm just thinking of like what he said about e3 and I'm com comparing PlayStation state of play mm -hmm where it was all trailers with very little <laughs> gameplay footage yeah and then nintendo direct on yeah. the opposite end of that where there was so much gameplay footage in mm -hmm. that and i just remember watching the two of them and thinking i am much more invested in what nintendo's doing because i actually see the game that's going to be played i'm not just being sold a bill of goods from playstation that i don't know if it's actually going to be like that yeah well, here, that's, that's one thing that I've always loved about Nintendo is they'll they'll give you these fantastic trailers, but then they sh always show a bunch of gameplay. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. um, like the Zelda games, I always love 
when when they come out with Zelda and Mario and you'll you'll see the creators talking and then you'll see the gameplay um, mm. that that's my favorite because you get to see it in action and you get to see like these developers or the head of the development team like coming out and playing and then you'll see the gameplay and stuff and you hear them talking about it mm -hmm. and that's that's why i love what nintendo does yeah um like when i saw uh death stranding mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. great yeah. great trailer that they had i was super hyped but it was just like here's the here's the trailer here's the movie portion like yeah. And, and my mind is always, well, how much of this is going to be in the actual game? Mm -hmm. And how does it mix in with the gameplay and stuff like that? Like, I get they're still developing. But, like Nas said, you know, with Nintendo, they do their directs. And it's usually, like, everything's almost done. And we've got gameplay footage to show you. Not just, here's what we got so far to capture your attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, it's not just like a sizzle reel. It's they're actually <laughs> showing gameplay mechanics and stuff like that. Exactly. But but I'm I'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Great, great. First it was donuts a couple weeks ago. Now it's chilies. And now I'm gonna need to go get me some baby back, baby back, baby back. Yes. <laughs> hey Fox, and, tell, uh, tell me that you didn't have breakfast without telling me you didn't have breakfast. I didn't okay. actually either. True story. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. But uh I'm always gonna go back to hell divers. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, too. yeah. Like, they kind of set a standard. They did. Absolutely mm -hmm. fabulous game. Yes. Gameplay is on point. Mm -hmm. Graphics are on point. They were super transparent, even said, hey, don't buy our game. We yeah. are having server issues mm -hmm. we did not anticipate. Don't buy it yet. Yeah, yeah. And right they on. still put it on sale when they yeah. got and they handled it faster than most places mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as far as getting that fixed. And oh, yeah. the game is thirty dollars. Yep. Right on. Yep. So do not tell me yeah. that y'all can't do something good for mm -hmm. the players without live service. Yeah. Right on. You know, for like a cheap amount because yeah. you, you pay your but, set amount with hell divers and then GG, yeah, the, it's online. Then they'd have to be accountable for their stupid ass decisions. <laughs> well, you That's, know. Well, I mean, we, can't, we are in we the can't age of patches and things like today. that for the sixty dollar box games yeah. too mm -hmm. so i mean but yeah. as far as his his comments on you know live service being superior 100 percent disagree with that um <laughs> there are um pros and cons to both you know <clears throat> it, it depends on you know what what's the flavor of the month um me i am story driven i like story driven games mostly mm -hmm. um and you know there are some uh live service games that i do play but that is not, it's not my main stuff. So I guess it depends on what you like most, you know, do you like the Fortnite or do you like the Uncharted? You know what I mean? And I don't think there's any way to make Uncharted into a live service game. Oh, you know, I don't want to know if there is, <laughs> but, but you know what? I like a game that ends. I'm sure yeah, exactly. I like that. Yes. Yeah. I don't want to be in a never ending story of games. I don't, I don't want that. Um, that's so, what i was talking about like he wants to turn games into soap operas like <laughs> come on man no so, just so the comments i think uh he's certainly misguided on that and honestly i think he's coming from you know obviously from the developer side of it um from the suits from the people who are actually making the game and i do believe that he's kind of conflating the two i don't think that it's going to be better for gamers i think it's going to be live services i think are essentially better for uh the um the companies just because they have one game and they can get literally an unlimited amount of money from them depending on how d good it does you know but uh, the, also i will give them it has to be a good game it has to be a hell divers too you know what i mean it does have to be a good yeah. game or power world or something like that for well, the reason customers the reason i think back. it's so good yeah, the reason mm -hmm. I think it's so good for developers is because mm -hmm. after the game is developed and it's launched, mm -hmm. you no longer have to have as many developers because you're basically in just operations and maintenance mode, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? You're just keeping the game running. Yeah, You can add stuff to it. There's less of a time crunch unless you mm -hmm. set a calendar for when you're going to create and launch new features. Right. But there's no... You, you, the game's already on its feet. You're just keeping it up there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that is a, another great point maintaining maintaining your right is mm -hmm. a lot cheaper and even yeah. you can even get like a team of five or ten that's in charge of you know well we're gonna do this campaign or this event or mm -hmm. or that but think about it like mm -hmm. um 
we all know I've been playing a lot of Fallout 76. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. Because my kiddo that, yeah. asked me to. <laughs> right, right. Um, Bomb and Phil so, Spencer's uh, deal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Goodness. Yeah. I've, I've enjoyed the fact that there's like a rolling thing of events mm -hmm. um, that are big events. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, I can do this. But mm -hmm. after like my first few times of doing it, I'm just like, okay, I'm done now. Right on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and and the, their events, from what I'm understanding with talking with my kid and stuff about different things is this is this is like an ongoing thing this is a every year thing yeah, and i'm yeah. like well Whoa. well looking at Fortnite, like at least they'll be like okay well we're gonna do this event and it's gonna be metallica and they're gonna do we're gonna do their in-game right. concert and this and that mm -hmm. and um what? you know yeah yeah the they'll, they'll do for, uh, um, they do events in their concerts and it's actually kind of cool um not not oh. for uh fallout but for What's for Fortnite. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. And so, like, my kid comes in, he's like, hey, mom, Metallica. And I'm like, yeah, no, I saw it on, <laughs> on my PlayStation thing. Like, I saw all the skins and everything, and I, I'd be interested <laughs> in watching that. And, uh, but they come up with these cool, like, little concert events, and and they're engaging. Like, I go watch it yeah. when my kid does the events, mm -hmm. and I'm not a Fortnite player. Um, I'm sure eventually, like, he could talk me into it, because apparently I'll do anything at least once for them um <laughs> but uh you know that's something that's different but that's something that they start talking about way earlier and then they've got their seasons that they do and that's what keeps them interested is doing new things and changing things up but you can do it on a on a smaller developer number if that makes sense so like your team of of 40 can now become like 10. Yeah. And you can reassign these people to something mm. else. Yeah. Or <laughs> hopefully reassign them to something else. Yeah. But the bottom line decide is that you have a redundancy and then lay them <laughs> off. Embracer. Yeah, exactly. Your butts. My... Well, embracer at, at least. There's so many. Yeah. yeah. I know. They're the worst of the worst. I, I, I will still continue to say it. They're the worst. It the wouldn't worst. be a casual consumer live stream <laughs> if you didn't crap on Embracer and Lars. But I mean, like, it's deserved it is yeah oh, <laughs> I I mean, it wasn't yeah so so we might bash certain things but you deserve it Lars. anyway um, yeah yeah uh, but for me like yeah you can you can get some really cool things that are engaging for um players or that will even bring either new ones or old players back with live service for at least a little bit um but it's good for the company it's it's not necessarily yeah. the gamers because you like with gta like gta 5 has been around for what like 20 years now mm. like 50 <laughs> years now something like that and you've got like the gta online and then you've got this and then you've got mm -hmm. that that you can do every month and i'm just like they've they charged like what 60 for this game back when yeah. it came out it's been on the last three generations of consoles they, they cracked it they cracked they've, it yeah they've made new games they've done updates and stuff like that but then you've got like uh like like fallout will have fallout first so you get x amount of money fortnite has it gta has it mm -hmm. you get this perk for being a member of our service every month so you'll get this much like shark car or, or you'll get this many V-Bucks or you'll get this many mm -hmm. um, Atoms or whatever it is. Mm, and then you also get this, this, and this. And these are the perks. So if mm -hmm. you join this subscription service for GTA, you can have this huge garage with all these cars and all these vehicles that you wouldn't necessarily have if you didn't have our monthly premium service. You know, at GD, if you weren't, if you didn't, if you weren't already explaining something I knew about, I'd think you were talking about a mobile game. Yeah. Yeah, that's I would exactly absolutely what absolutely think that you were talking about a mobile game. Yeah. The mobile the mobile game is their their template is exactly how they run these live services now. Why wouldn't they? I mean, yeah. they're looking at they're looking at mobile games and looking at all the money that they're raking in and all the people that are playing them and and look at Asia. Oh, trust Asia me, I know. Asia has a mm -hmm. tremendous amount of mobile gamers and they're thinking, "I want that." So, how do yes. I how do I how do I get that? Well, yep. we have to compare mm -hmm. and say that 
um, live service games are superior to the traditional box model. And that's what this article pretty much is. Mm -hmm. It's not that one is superior to the other. Yeah. I mean, on a personal level, sure. Each person's going to decide which one's better. Exactly. But on the whole, they're just different. <clears throat> you don't need to compare the two of them. They are just different and different mm -hmm. customers want different things. And yeah. that's that. Yeah. Don't yeah. say this is better for players. Like you don't have any right to decide that right. for me, Joe, get out of here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I'm, constant, I'm constantly getting a text message talking about, I bought this for my mobile game, so I sent you this much money because we're on a, <laughs> we're on a family like mm -hmm. plan. So like, you know, all my, my music, my, my cloud storage, all of it is shared, you know, so like my kids and spouse and everybody all has it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I'll constantly get, Hey, you know, I bought this, so I'm going to shoot you the money and I'm just like dude you sent me money yesterday like mm -hmm. what'd you buy today and then i'll and then i'll be like what do you mean 6.99 like you spent 10.99 <laughs> yesterday and so i'm <laughs> hey, they, they add up man you keep yeah. doing that yeah i'm like yeah. dang dude right like, on yeah and the and the games will be like um my son i'll watch all the time he'll be like if i can get this far and in my season, you know, because I bought the subscription for the season or whatever, then yeah. I can get this many V bucks. And I'm like, yeah, that's not going to come <laughs> close to getting you anything. It kills me. And so, it yeah, so you're going to be asking me for V bucks like mm -hmm. every three days. And eventually I'm going to have to like use some of Lord Beerus's wrestling moves on you. Because like, <laughs> right. he loves that pro wrestling so much. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the Casual Consumers live stream every Saturday.